I lacked confidence most of my life and I spent most of my life looking for other people to tell me I was good enough and I've only gotten over that the last couple of years. So I wanted to share a couple of ideas, a couple of stories, a couple of physical exercises today that I hope can help you guys out. My earliest memory in school, going back to primary school, was of being bullied. Um, I grew up in Limerick and I was bullied for silly reasons, being the youngest in the class or the way I looked or the way I dressed. And uh, in reality, it only probably happened on a few occasions. But each time it happened, I replayed it in my head thousands of times. And that's something we sometimes do. We talk to ourselves more than anyone else in the world. And oftentimes when something negative happens, we replay it again and again and again. It, it goes on a loop. So effectively, I bullied myself. And because I was bullied, I had this um, insecurity in myself that I wasn't good enough, that I didn't fit in, that I was different. And I carried that with me throughout my life. Um, when I went to secondary school, I met a group of friends and it was great to have friends but I had this kind of imposter syndrome, this idea in the back of my mind that someday they were going to find out what I knew about myself and that was that I wasn't cool and I shouldn't fit in. I hung out with skateboarders, not because I was interested in skateboarders but they seemed to uh, be cool and so I thought if I get a skateboard and I do what other people are doing that will make me fit in. And then when I went to college, again I did other things outside of myself because I didn't believe in myself, I turned to alcohol. And alcohol was a way of me feeling confident for a few hours, but then the next day feeling worse again. So there was always things outside of myself. When I left college, I became an adult or grown up. I told myself, if I become successful, and if other people think that I'm great, I'll think I'm great. And so I went after building a business, and I made some money, and I made some profile. And then I told myself, if I get a house and I get a car, then I'll be happy. And it was always, what's the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. Always looking outside of myself. And I found myself at 26 with a house and a car and a business and great friends and family. Everything I thought I ever wanted. And really struggling with my mental health. And it really messed with me because when things go wrong in life, you can kind of understand why you feel down. But when everything looks good, it's hard to kind of um, deal with that. So I looked at it, I said at 26, I've spent my whole life looking outside of myself for other people to accept me. I've been obsessed by other people in my life. And I've spent my whole life chasing material things, thinking that when I get that, then I'll feel happy, I'll feel peace, I'll feel confidence. And what I recognized at that time is that the most important relationship anyone in this room will ever have is the relationship they have with themselves. Like we're all gonna do different things in the future. Some of you guys will travel the world, others will go into the workplace, others will go to college. Wherever you go in life, it's you and you look at yourself in the mirror and how you feel about yourself is everything. You know, a hundred people could say something nice about you, but if you don't believe it, it doesn't land and it doesn't mean anything. So I started thinking about what it takes for a great relationship with someone else and there were three kind of key factors that were necessary. The first thing was that to have a good relationship with someone, you've got to take time for them. Obviously, if your friends don't take time for you, for you, you don't feel very important to them. The second thing that was important in a great relationship with other people was that you got to know each other on a deeper level. You weren't just having the same conversation all the time. And the third important thing was that you were present and engaged. You weren't just on your phone all the time or thinking about a million different things. So I kind of flipped it on its head and I said, well, if I want a great relationship with myself, is it worth thinking about these things? How often do I take time for myself? How often do I challenge myself and get to know myself on a deeper level? And finally, how often am I present where I'm not switched on to technology or I'm not thinking about a million different things? And for me, the answer was rare for all three of those things. I was always chasing, always thinking, when I get somewhere else, then I'll be happy. So I'm gonna share three little ideas through exercises and stories that I hope can help you guys with these three things. Taking time for ourselves, developing the relationship with ourselves, and being present. So can I get everyone to stand up real quick, please? Sorry guys. Okay, here's, uh, here's the first exercise we're going to do. Uh, I want everyone to spread their hands without slapping anyone around you, please. Uh, I'm going to count down three, two, one. I'm going to count down three, two, one. When I say one, we're just going to slap our hands, interlock our fingers, okay? In perfect unison. So we're going to go hands nice and wide. Let's try and get everyone perfectly in unison, okay? Three, two, one, go. Good. There's a few stragglers at the back. Okay, let's go again. A little bit sharper, a little bit louder, a little bit faster. Three, two, one. Really good. Second last one, always catch people on this. Three, two. Oh. Okay, last one, hands nice and wide. 
Keep your hands there at the end when we finish. Three, two, one. Perfect, okay. Looking down at your fingers, you can look at the person left and right of you. Harvard research, if your right thumb is on top of your left thumb, you're gonna have a lot of romance in your life in the next six months. <laughs> Thumb on top of right thumb, lots of money in the next six months. So I saw a few people switching thumbs. Um, if somehow you put your thumbs together and you got both, you're not getting any money or any romance in the next six months. No, uh, silly little idea, okay? So nobody stopped here and thought which thumb is going to go on top of the other. We just did what we've always done. So we do things on autopilot all the time. First time we learn to tie our shoelaces, it's really difficult. But as we learn, we become faster and faster and more efficient at it. Okay, so we've got to, um, we've got to stop sometimes and slow down and think about what is it that we're trying to do in life. That was a really simple example of looking at, okay, what does my life look like? When we're busy, when we're on the move all the time, we don't get a chance to think about what matters in life. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do with a partner. Uh, first person is gonna say one, my partner's gonna say two, and I'm gonna say three. Then it starts again. One, two, three, one, two, three. Simple as that, then I'll add an instruction. So look out for my hands. Give it a go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, go. Okay. Now, instead of one, Instead of one, I want you to clap. So it's going to be two, three, two, three. Give it a go. And you'll clap. Two, three. Clap, two, three. Okay. Now, so person instead of one is going to clap. Person instead of two is going to kick. And then you're going to say three. So it's going to be clap, kick, three. Go. Instead of three, I want you to go woo! So it's gonna be clap, kick, woo! Go! Okay! Two little ideas I want you to take. So just fun exercises there, but two ideas. The secret to happiness, to confidence, to inner peace, to having a great relationship with yourself is number one, slow down every now and then and look at what am I doing? So we saw right thumb is on top of left or left is on top of right, that doesn't matter. But when we stop and we look at how does my life look? When am I happy? When am I sad? What works? What doesn't work? Who's my support system? Just slowing down and thinking about what we want from life. It's giving ourselves a roadmap. The second idea with the clap two, three, woo two, three uh, and the shouting was, if I came into the room 20 minutes ago and I said to you guys, grab a partner and shout woo at each other. You'd think it was crazy, you wouldn't do it because it was, it was overwhelming. The secret to leaning into fears in life and challenging ourselves and growing in life is little steps, stretching ourselves consistently every day. Small little movements every day and suddenly you're doing something that a few minutes ago was impossible. So I challenge you to take more time for yourselves and take many steps every day toward the things that you want in life. Thank you very much for having me. Enjoy your day.